page 332. Continued. Angry young men. Para. This term is loosely applied to both the dramatists and novelists of the 1950s who vociferously protested against the prevalent social mores and inst institutions. The mood of the court, angries, unquote, was ineffectively epitomized by George Osborne, O-S-B-O-R-N-E, in his pioneering effort, Look Back in Anger. Osborne was followed by authors like John Bryan, John Wine, and Alan Silito. Osborne's protagonist, Jimmy Porter, is a young university graduate living with his wife, Alison, who is ironing clothes most of the time in a one-room flat. Page 333. Most of the time, Jimmy is wittily attacking established institutions and respectable notions of propriety. Jimmy has been hailed as the first non-hero of modern drama. To us, 50 years after his appearance, Jimmy, with all his colourful rhetoric and incisive criticism, looks like a bilious, B-I-L-I-O-U-S, loudmouth. But in his day, he was said, quote, to represent, unquote, comma, in the words of Gareth Lloyd Evans, comma, quote, a post-war generation in his anger, comma, petulance, comma, dissatisfaction, comma, infirmity of purpose, comma, railing, comma, complaining, stop, unquote. Both Osborne and Jimmy became something like cult figures representing the temper of their time. Of the rest of Osborne's plays, the best by far is The Entertainer, 1957. The quote, angries, unquote, other than Osborne, who have been named above, are of far less importance. Para, non-radical social protesters. This group, group within court, comprises John Arden, A-R-D-E-N, comma, Arnold Wesker, W-E-S-K-E-R, comma, Angelico, J-E-L-L-I-C-O-E, comma, Shellag, S-H-E-L-A-G-H, Delaney, D-E-L-A-N-E-Y, comma, Robert Bolt, comma, Tom Stoppard, S-T-O-P-P-A-R-D, comma, Alan Ayakbom, A Y C K B O U M, comma, and Peter Schaeffer, S H A F F E R, stop. Most of them have a leftist leaning, and several of them show the influence of Brecht. As regards technique, they generally abide by the demands of naturalism, but at times use devices like symbolism, interior monologue, and even those normally associated with the theatre of the absurd. Their drama is almost overtly purposive and of contemporary relevance. Unlike the iconoclastic rhetoric of the quote, angry young men, comma, unquote, their zeal and purpose have clearly defined targets. Para. John Arden shows the influence of Brecht in his vigorous dialogue and his dramatic use of lyrics. Like Shaw, he wrote the drama of ideas with a social purpose. Comparing Arden and Shaw, Andrew Piasecki, P I A S E C K I, observes, quote, No dramatist in England since Shaw had used the theatre for such thorough exploration of political and social ideas, comma. But whereas Shaw made the ideas central to his dramas and the characters merely instrumental to them, comma, Arden made his characters central, dot, 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 unquote. Arden's best-known play is Sergeant Musgrave Dance, wherein he tries to balance pacifism and violent revolution. It is a thought-provoking play which tries to temper 
revolutionary zeal with a reminder about the unlimited destructive potentiality of having a recourse to the gun. Wesker is a campaigner for mutual understanding and sympathy, cutting across class barriers. The other playwrights in this group have also tried their hand attacking social problems and narrow attitudes, but have mostly stopped short of the Marxian concepts of class struggle and economic exploitation. <laughs> Radical leftists, comma, revolutionists, comma, and anarchists. Their scalpel has a definite ideological curve and it goes deeper just deeper jut the diseased flesh than that of the mild protesters mentioned above. This group comprises Edward Bond, Joe J O E Orton O R T O N, comma, Trevor Griffiths, G R I F F I T H S, comma, Howard Brenton, B R D N T O N, comma, David Edgar, comma, and David Hare. All these playwrights, Lind, L I N V E, I think it's a printing mistake, violent anti establishment attitude, which in the case of Orton hikes the shape of sheer anarchism. As would be expected, they often violate censored laws and even the unwritten laws of decency. For example, Bond's early play, Saved, S-A-V-E-D, was heavily censored because of its candid sex scenes and the scene in which a child is stoned to death. His early marriage was banned outright because it depicted Queen Victoria as a lesbian. Orton was a sheer anarchist. This is shown both by his ideological bent and the chaotic nature of his plots, which at times look like lurid farces. Sex and institutional corruption are his favorite themes. Griffiths is a socialist, but now writes mostly for TV. As Christopher Innes, I-N-N-E-S, has so well put it, comma, quote, the landmarks in contemporary English drama have been more like landmines, comma, shattering conventional expectations, comma, with a whole new configuration of subjects and themes emerging on the stage each time after the dust of public courage settled. Stop, unquote. Inns identifies some of such, quote, landmarks hyphen landmines, unquote, as Osborne's Look Back, comma, Barnes Saved, comma, and Breton's The Romans in Britain. What the first deed to the 50s and the second to the 60s was done by the third to the 80s. Edgar and Hare use eloquent characters and emotionally charged and tense situations. They use the theatre for subversion of order and authority at various levels. Both of them are wedded to the idea of a socialist theatre. Para, theatre of the absurd. Finally, we have to consider the technical innovators like Beckett and Harold Pinter who brought foreign influences to bear on English drama, influences which transformed its very being. These influences were chiefly derived from the theatre of the absurd which originated from France. Page 334 Para, quote, theater of the absurd, unquote, is the term used by Martin Esslin to describe the, quote, new theater, unquote, of the 1950s, started by the Romanian-born French playwright Lonesco, L-O-N-E-S-C-O, with the staging of his play. The bald prima donna in Paris in 1950 the original French version of Beckett's Waiting for Godot was staged three years later while the English version was put up on a London stage in 1955. 
Lonesco and Beckett were hailed in France and England as pioneers of the new revolutionary drama, which was later in 1961 termed by Esslin, the quote, theatre of the absurd, comma, unquote. It should be full stop. The two other French practitioners of this kind of trauma were Jean Gennett, G-E-N-E-T, and Arthur Adamov, A-D-A-M-O-V. In England, Harold Pinter and N. F. Simpson adopted some features of absurd drama. Para. Theatre of the Absurd was based on the philosophy of existentialism of Camus, C-A-M-U-S, and Sartre, S-A-R-T-R-E, according to which the universe and an individual's life in it are too chaotic and too irrational to be reduced to a comprehensive system. The absurd arises from the tensor, I think it should be tension, between man's keenness to understand the universe and the refusal of the recalcitrant universe to be understood. Despair is a natural concomitant of the absurd. However gloomy absurdism may be, it yet has a bracing effect. I repeat again, however gloomy absurd is in maybe, it yet has a bracing effect on man who must face existence, however bleak and meaningless, without any reassuring props of religion or evasive philosophy. Theatre of the Absurd tries to mirror the chaos and incomprehensibility of existence. Plot is dismissed because it is based on causality, characters and mostly ordinary people who do not understand themselves or one another and whatever they do is arbitrary and unpredictable and incomprehensible to themselves and to the audience. Yet, like an abstract painting, a good absurdist play has a pattern of images, motifs and emphasis which affect the reader or spectator like poetry. Para. Beckett's Waiting for Godot proved a landmark in the history of English drama. He followed it up with a few more plays, the best known of which is Endgame. Pinter is the most notable practitioner of absurd drama after Beckett. In his plays, he specializes in creating suggestions of unforeseeable menace which terrifies the protagonists of who long for security. This menace is, of course, the fear of death, of, quote, nothingness, unquote, which is generally represented as the succumb ambient darkness waiting to enter through a door into the safe heaven of a room or a house in order to engulf the protagonist. The vogue of absurd drama lasted for about a decade from 1955, but its influence can be found in the work of several latter-day playwrights as well. The drama of the absurd, para, quote, the theater of the absurd, unquote, was a phrase derived from Camus, Philosophy of the Absurd and popularized by Martin Eslin's book, The Theatre of Absurd, 1961. Eslin applied the term to the work of mainly four French playwrights, which appeared on the stage in Paris in the early 1950s, starting with Lonesco's The Bald Prima Donna, 1950. The other three playwrights included by Esleen were Beckett, Adamov, and Janet. This kind of trauma did, remained in ascendance till the early 1960s. The theatre of the absurd came to England with the staging in London of Beckett's Waiting for Godot in 1955, the French version of which had already been staged in Paris a couple of years earlier. Para, the philosophic basis of absurd drama. 
the theatre of the absurd envisaged a radical departure from all kinds of conventional drama. It stood for total revolution rather than a few cosmetic changes. It was for a new content and a new form. The content was largely derived from the philosophical thought of Camus and Sartre, which may be called absurdism and existentialism respectively. As regards dramatic technique, the new kind of drama was to be what Lonesco, its first exponent, described as quote, anti-play, unquote, or quote, anti-theater, unquote, which would discard all conventional notions of plot, characterization, dialogues, setting, etc., dating from the practice of the ancient Greek playwrights and the dramatic theory of Aristotle. The theatre of the absurd, in the words of Claude Schumacher, S-C-H-U-M-A-C-H-E-R, quote, overturned 25 centuries of tradition by rejecting all rules and by facing the chaos head-on, stop, unquote, para, Camus and Sartre. The chaos of existence as conceptualized by Camus and Sartre is the basis of absurd drama. According to these philosophers, the universe and man's experience in it are meaningless. All attempts by the human mind to understand the whole world, all attempts by the human mind to understand the world are futile. All philosophical systems and religions which claim that they can enable man to make sense of the world are delusive and useless. The absent is defined by Camus as the tension which arises from man's determination to discover order and purpose in a world which firmly refuses to show either. Page 335 this definition of the absurd is to be found in Camus, the myth of Sisyphus, S -S -S -Y -P -H -U -S, 1942. In Greek mythology, Sisyphus was a cruel king condemned by the gods forever to roll a huge stone up a hill in Hades, H -A -D -E -S, comma, only to have it roll down the hill just before reaching the top. Camus suggests that whatever a man does in this world is as futile and meaningless as Sisyphus's eternal labor. Camus' absurdism looks like a philosophy of defeat and despair. However, there is something bracing and valuable in being freed from illusions to face, quote, the chaos, head on, stop, unquote, para. The Technical Aspect of Absurd Drama Camus was the first absurdist and he wrote several plays which propagated this new philosophy. But his own plays do not belong to the theatre of the absurd. It is so because he mostly uses the conventional dramatic form and technique which enable him to convey this absurdist vision lucidly and effectively. Chaos cannot be conveyed though chaos but through chaos. Chaos cannot be conveyed through chaos but through an ordered form. But the theatre of the absurd th thought otherwise. Very correctly, Lonesco called his first play, The Bald Prima Donna, quote, anti play, unquote, and his kind of theatre, quote, anti theatre, unquote, comma, suggesting thereby a wholesale subversion of the conventional dramaturgy. Sartre emphasizes what he calls, quote, the three essential refusals, unquote, of the new dramatists. These are, quote, the refusal of psychology, comma, the refusal of plot, comma, and the refusal of all realism, stop, unquote, para. The, quote, refusal of psychology, unquote, means that character should not be consistent or fully conceived with a clear past and a fairly predictable future. Claude Schumacher observes in this context, quote, 
characters in contemporary plays are often parodic, comma, grotesque, comma, incomplete, comma, self-contradictory, stop. They do not understand who they are. They do not understand the world around them, comma. They are baffled by all the events that occur while they are on the stage, stop, unquote. The quote, refusal of plot, remo unquote, removes what Aristotle considered the most important of the six elements of tragedy. The theatre of the absurd is drama of inaction, a contradiction in terms because, quote, tran, t-r-a-n, unquote, comma, the Greek root of, quote, drama, unquote, comma, means action. Inaction is the action of such drama. Like Sisyphus, characters in this drama do nothing meaningful or well-motivated. Whatever incidents are there do not make up a sensible pattern, not to speak of a coherent plot. Like life, an absurd play is meaningless. Lonesco wrote, apropos of his play, The Chairs, C-H-A-I-R-S, stop. Para, quote, Since I am unable to understand the world, comma, how could I understand my own play? Question mark. I hope someone would explain it to me. Stop. Unquote. The plot of this play is absurd to the last degree. A 95 years old lighthouse keeper and his wife invite people so that the old man may deliver his quote, message unquote, before retiring. Stop. The invitees arrive, but the chairs remain vacant. Stop. The old man asks the, quote, orator, unquote, comma, whom he has hired for the purpose, comma, to deliver his message on his behalf, and then jumps into the sea along with his wife. Stop. The, quote, orator, question mark, unquote, is dumb and mute and can only make incoherent sounds. Equipped so sorrily, he delivers the message to vacant chairs, exclamation mark. Even meaninglessness as a meaning, stop. The meaning of this play, comma, like that of most absurd plays, comma, is the impossibility of communication and yet its necessity, stop. Consider Beckett's definition of art as Cologne, quote, the expression that there is nothing to express, comma, nothing with which to express, comma, nothing from which to express, comma, no power to express, comma, no desire to express, comma, together with the obligation to express, top, unquote, para. The quote, refusal of realism, unquote, has two implications. First, that naturalism has become obsolete. And second, that to quote Schumacher, quote, an artistic creation must create its own reality, dot, 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 often fantastic, comma, grotesque, comma, oniric, O-N-E-I-R-I-C. The action takes place in non-defined locations, Within surrealist, without motivation, dot, dot, dot. They are prone to parody themselves or one another. Stop. The dialogue follows its own logic and has recourse to interior monologues, comma, streams of consciousness, comma, rhythmic repetitions, comma, flat contradictions, comma, sudden ruptures, comma, Logoria interspersed with long aphasia like silences stop unquote. Para the British practitioner Samuel Beckett Samuel Beckett and Harold Pinter in England and Edward Alby in America are the chief playwrights associated with the theatre of the absurd in English. Let us consider the work of the two British playwrights. Para. Beckett has been one of the boldest and most effective innovators in the fields of drama and novel in the 20th century. An Irish expatriate settled in France like James Joyce, he wrote both in French and in English. 
His play, Waiting for Godot, is the best example of the theatre of the absurd. The vision of the life conveyed by his plays is sombre and bleak, and yet grotesquely funny. Page 336, Para Waiting for Godot has already become what Esleen, E.S.S. Elian, describes as, quote, a contemporary classic, unquote, comma, it is a locus, L-O-C-U-S, classicus, C-L-A-S-S-I-C-U-S of Theatre of the Absurd. The two acts of the play have similarity with a little variation. The play opens with two tramps, comma, Vladimir and Istragon, waiting for one Mr. Godo, G-O-D-O-T, within bracket, God, question mark, with whom they have an appointment. However, it is doubtful if they really have such an appointment and if any time and place have been fixed for the meeting. It is also uncertain if their names are Vladimir and Estragon, Estragon and not Mr. Albert and Catullus. The two remain talking as if to while away time in both the acts. In each act, they meet another pair of characters, Pozo, P-O-Z-Z-O, and Lucky, L-U-C-K-Y. Pozo is fat and rich, while Lucky is weak and poor, and looks like Pozo's slave who drives him with a whip. At the end of each act, a boy brings the message that Godot will come tomorrow. In the second act, Pozo goes blind, and Lucky who has been talking volubly about science and philosophy, goes dumb. The futile wait for God represents the human predicament. The whole ray is like an abstract painting, very difficult to decipher. <clears throat> Para. Beckett's other plays are also thought-provoking and built around the themes of identity and existence. In a meaningless world which has both fantastic and disgusting aspects, Endgame represents two elderly characters who are senile and repulsive, placed in dustbins throughout and yet musing about the time of their honeymoon when they cycled together. In Crap's last tape, T A P E, comma, Crap, K R A P P, now very old, listens to the tape of his own voice prepared in his youthful days. In Not I, the audience is met to see only a mouth trying to give expression to reminiscences. What is evident is that Beckett's characters are mostly isolated individuals, each living in his own world, enclosed and encapsulated, unable to communicate with others. Para Harold Pinter, 1930 Pinter shows the influence of Beckett and Theatre of the Absurd in his earlier plays like The Room, 1957, The Birthday Party, 1958, and The Caretaker, 1960. His later plays are, however, more realistic, straightforward, or politically purposive to be exemplars of absurd drama. His latest plays like One for the Road, 1985, Mountain Language, 1988, are in Schumacher's words, comma, quote, straightforward and political statements, comma, the first dealing with state torture and the second with genocide. Stop, unquote, para. Pinter is specially good at creating suggestions of an unnameable and unpredictable calamity which terrifies the protagonist who long for security and certainty. The calamity is represented as lurking in the succumbent darkness while security and certainty are represented by a well-lit room or a house. Pinter's first play, The Room, represents an old woman living in a small, warm room in a big, dark and mysterious house which terrifies her all the time. Her fears come true when a blind black man comes to take her home. Home within court. 
In the birthday party, Stanley, the hero, is similarly led away from his rented lodging by a Jew and an Irishman into the darkness outside. Para Quote, the drama of ideas, unquote, in the 20th century. The development of the problem played towards the close of the Victorian age was closely related to the growth of the realistic movement in the field of English drama. Quote, the problem played, unquote, comma, according to Albert Gerard, G-U-E-R-A-R-D, comma, quote, is the presentation of a contemporary question through realistic technique, stop, unquote. The dramatists of the problem play were preoccupied with the vital problems of contemporary life and morality and the drama which was directly inspired by the social ferment of the time could be effective only if it adopted a realistic form or medium. No serious analysis of the issues or problems facing society could be possible as long as the dramatists ignored the facts and conditions of life as they actually existed. These new dramatists made a conscious effort to deal with the social problems of the time, howsoever repellent they might be to the Puritans. Para, the realistic movement was strengthened by the growth of the scientific spirit, which stimulated the desire for facts and fostered an attitude of dispassionate observation. Moreover, the foreign influences on drama gave an enormous impetus to the realist movement. The works of Henrik Ibsen and Emil Zola encouraged the spirit of naturalism in English drama. Emil Zola aimed at giving a faithful and vivid impression of the banality of everyday life and was convinced that the naturalistic movement would give life and vigor to the theatre and make it, comma, modern and realistic, unquote, stop. Similarly, in Ghost and other plays, Ibsen aimed at giving an impression of reality. Page 337 he placed the themes and situations of real contemporary life on the stage and made serious drama a mirror as well as a stern monitor of his age. The inclusion of fact in fiction and drama became a serious issue during the 80s. Zola and Ibsen were considered vulgar and obscene and were greeted with derision and abuse. The English critics E. Goss, G O S S E, comma, Robert Buchanan, B U C H A N A N, and Miss Vernon Lee, L E E, who supported the case of the naturalists, placed their own reputation in jeopardy. The House of Commons discussed the pernicious influence exercised by Zola and Henry Vizetelli. V I Z E T E L L Y was twice fined and imprisoned for publishing translations of La Terra, T E R R E and Nana. However, active hostility to realism subsided during the 90s, and the plays of Ibsen and the novels of Zola were widely read. Under their influence, English drama banished the outworn conventions of the theatre and prescribed, quote, truth of life, unquote, as the principal test of dramatic achievement. Quote, truth first, comma, unquote, in the words of Harold Brickhouse, B-R-I-G-H-O-U-S-E, comma, quote, was the motto of the new drama, comma, which set about its business of truth-telling in plain-dealing naturalist way, eschewing high-flown symbols, stop, unquote. The serious drama to deal with themes remote in time or place, comma, and romantic extravagances began to yield place to a sincere and realistic treatment of actual English life. The serious playwright had no patience with fool's paradise. 
he did not look at life through magic casements or transport his audiences to enchanted aisles or forests. The facts and problems of commonplace life furnished him with the necessary impulse to artistic creation. Instead of soaring away adventurously into the re realms of romance or escaping into, quote, the intense in and unquote, like Shelley, comma, he explored the dramatic possibilities of contemporary life and experience. Stop. Para. The term, quote, the problem play, unquote, was coined by Sidney Grundy, G-R-U-N-D-Y, who used it in a disparaging sense for the intellectual drama of the 90s, which he believed was marching to its doom in the hands of a quote, a coterie of enthusiastic eccentrics, unquote, stop. The problem play has not been precisely defined, though it is supposed to deal with problems, and Shaw deemed it as, quote, the presentation in parable of the conflict between man's will and his environment, stop, unquote. This does not furnish a certain basis or criterion because drama always presupposes the existence of a conflict in which human destinies are involved and invariably presents the issue in the form of a concrete problem which calls for a solution. Eric Bentley, P E N T L E Y, finds the justification of the word, quote, problem, unquote, on the ground that the play ends with a question mark. He says that the dramatist business is to state his problem clearly and effectively and not to present a ready made solution or to suggest a specific remedy. Para, the problem play is supposed to have arisen out of the sentimental drama of the 18th century and has been often identified with, quote, trauma, unquote, comma, a dramatic form, distinctly serious but not tragic, that aims at presenting life's blend of smiles and tears. It is believed that problem drama or the so-called drama differs essentially from tragedy, even though it deals with serious issues. It normally exhibits ideas, situations and feelings that lack tragic dimensions. It is distinguished from comedy not only by the lack of episodes designed simply to amuse, but on account of its serious temper and didactic aim. Professor W. W. Lawrence believes that it has no kinship even with the so-called tragic comedy which lacks the necessary seriousness and is on the whole not analytical but theatrical. Stop, unquote, para. The element of propaganda. The problem play is sometimes called, quote, the propaganda play, unquote, for the obvious reason that its intent is overtly didactic and propagandist. The writer of the problem play is not a pure aesthete, A-E-S-T-H-E-T-E, -E -E, a dispassionate creator of beautiful artifacts for their own sake. He is not like Henry James's, quote, God of creation, unquote, who remains out of his creation indifferently, quote, paring his fingernails, stop, unquote. Ibsen, Shaw and Goldsworthy have written such plays to direct public attention to social evils and wrong attitudes. And what is more, a problem play is not something merely diagnostic, but also something therapeutic. In other words, it not only spells out the eels, but also prescribes the remedy. Shaw scoffed at the slogan, quote, art for art's sake, stop, unquote. He said that for the sake of art, he would not undertake the labor of writing even one sentence, not to speak of a whole play, stop, para. Technique, the prominence of discussion. 
Abram observes, colon, quote, one subtype of the problem play is the discussion play, comma, in which the social issue is not incorporated into a single quote plot, comma, but expounded in the dramatic give and take of a sustained debate among the characters. Stop, unquote, unquote, double quote. <clears throat> For example, in Shaw's Getting Married, the story is reduced to the minimum. At page 338, Act 3 of Man and Superman shows no action, only a long debate. Debates, however lively and witty, cannot take the place of action in drama. Bracket. The very word drama is from the Greek public speaker, and most of the dialogues in his plays dash both for and against the issue in hand dash are witty and often very absorbing comma but they do not constitute real dramatic action stop but no bracket closing shown i for i f o r evans observes quote para the brilliance of his dialogue sometimes leads him beyond the bounds of dramatic propriety so that the stage becomes a hustings, H-U-S-D-I-N-G-S, stop, unquote. In the plays of a lesser artist like Goldsworthy, this effect is all the more serious because his debates and lengthy dialogues are without any sparkle of engaging vitality. Para. Criticism of the problem play. Para. The problem play remained a theatrical outcast during the 90s. It was supposed to be dull and wearisome and was, therefore, unacceptable to the popular commercial theatre of London which aimed at providing cheap amusement and relaxation. Many theatre managers believed that problem play could not be a sound business venture. Richard Mansfield abandoned Candida, C-A-N-D-I-D-A, turned down the philanderer and a man of destiny, and described Caesar and Cleopatra as, quote, an imbecile burlesque, stop, unquote, B-U-R-L-E-S-Q-U-E, burlesque, para. The problem play ventured to deal with themes that were not only painful to modesty but repugnant to good taste. They dealt with painful subjects and therefore suffered on account of the neo-Puritan attitude of the average playgoer and the British censor. It was considered morally pernicious and unwholesome, and its performance in the public theatre was often banned. The examiner of stage plays was bitterly hostile to the problem play. In Hendel, H-N-D-L-E, Wakes, W-A-K-E-S, Stanley Houghton, H-O-U-G-H-T-O-N, portrayed a young woman who was guilty of a sexual lapse or indiscretion but declined to marry her accomplice. The play was supposed to be a justification of the sowing of wild oats and caused a tremendous stir. Shaw was also an iconoclast and appeared on the stage as a specialist in immoral and heretical plays. With Mrs. Warren's profession, he caused a moral panic. The Devil's Disciple and Androcles and the Lion offended the pious and Shaw was held guilty of blasphemy. Para. The criticism of problem drama has also been generally vitiated by the belief that didacticism and propaganda has no place in the theatre. J. M. Singe said, comma, quote, drama, comma, like the symphony, comma, does not teach or prove anything, stop, unquote. Propaganda plays were rarely popular and it was widely held that the dramatist has nothing to do with social injustices and cruelties. Dramatic art, it was believed, was not concerned with ethics, economics, politics and sociology and its, quote, morality, unquote, solely consisted of artistic sincerity 
an aesthetic pleasure. The very notion of a serious, thought-provoking drama was unacceptable to W.S. Mom and W.B. Yeats. The so-called, quote, play of ideas, unquote, has often been dismissed as, quote, a literary heresy, unquote, comma, and regarded as an offence against art or a symptom of its decadence. Para, it is often argued that problem drama is rarely good art because when the propagandist or thinker gains the upper hand, the artist perishes. The dramatist who has a message to convey, a case to prove, is tempted to wrest w r e s t facts from their true setting and distort situation and character. He is inclined to shape the conflict and action arbitrarily to set a preconceived denouement, d e n o u e m e n t, at the expense of verisimilitude. Stop. <clears throat> Para. Problem drama, it is often urged, lacks abiding interest and has a purely local or topical significance. It is based on the shifting sands of convention and morality and raises issues that are not independent of time and place, for example, votes for women, facilities for divorce and reform of prison conditions. The problems it poses may be solved in course of time, and the life and conditions that it criticizes may suffer a drastic change through legislation or the spread of enlightened opinion. Customs, manners, and even morals become obsolete in course of time. The conventions of one period lose their sanctity in a more advanced epoch and the values that are cherished in one stage of civilization are soon replaced by mere, more progressive ideals. The flogging of dead horses, it is said, is neither a dramatic nor an edifying spectacle, and plays which attack abuses and tyrannies that have ceased to afflict us are bound to sink into Boliviano. Much of Shaw's philosophy today seems insignificant and his plays, it is believed, will have no interest for posterity except as historical evidence of a passing phase of British society and culture. Goldsworthy's justice and strife have been regarded as topical skits, SKITs, that will become obsolete as soon as certain changes or reforms are introduced in the methods of dealing with criminals and industrial disputes. Para. The problem playwright was supposed to convey ideas and not to tell a story. The problem play lacked action. Stop. Page 339. A doll's house was regarded as extremely boring because it suffered from, quote, an almost total lack of action, unquote, and, quote, a series of conversations terminated by an accident, unquote, stop. J.T. Grein, G-R-E-I-N, found the philanderer, quote, excessively verbose, comma, overloaded with side issues, stop, unquote. The works of Granville Barker, particularly the Voice C, V-O-Y-S-E-Y, Inheritance, and Madras House, have similarly been found wanting in action and are sometimes dismissed as mere arguments in the form of stage plays. Para. The characters introduced in problem drama have also incurred critical censure. The problem playwright often portrays men and women who flout the dictates of conventional morality and delight in social heresy. He directs attention to the fortunes of sinners and rebels, and his characters therefore are said to be immodest and vulgar, destitute of nobility and idealism. William Archer brought this charge against Bernard Shaw. <clears throat>